I was having a rummage the other day in Bike Cave Site B, and um, well, I found this. This is my old rally chopper. I completely forgot this thing existed, so uh, getting it out actually gave me a great idea. Okay, so this one is not a 1970s original. This is a Mark III, which means it does have brakes that work, for starters, but it does lack the one-piece banana seat. This was a bit of a cop-out. It's got a two-piece option on here. And it also lacks that suicide shifter that was on the top tube there. You know, the one that everyone used to smack their knackers on every five minutes when you slipped on these rubbish little plastic pedals. But anyway, today what I want to talk about is wheel sizes. Now, you might have heard about the mullet thing, and I think everyone's getting a bit carried away with it. That's mixed wheel sizes to you and me, not the power haircut from the 80s. Anyway, this bike here has a tiny front wheel, as you can see, and a massive rear wheel by comparison. Super comfortable for cruising the hood and very different to what many brands are doing right now. Now, I'm sure some of you will have noticed that racers such as Loic Bruni have proven that running a smaller rear wheel, like the mullet setup, can actually be beneficial and be faster for them. But I've got to tell you, I cannot stand these mullet style bikes. The small rear wheel, the big front wheel, it looks a bit weird. And well, to be honest, this kind of dislike actually stems back to the specialized big hit for me, of which I used to own one. Beautiful looking bike in a kind of oxblood color. 26 inch on the front, 24 on the rear. Hit a big bump, you know about it because it kicks you up the ass. Exactly what you don't want. And as for putting a smaller rear wheel on a hardtail, well, I just think you'd be crazy to do that. And I kind of blame Darren Berikloff for it. Uh, sorry, Darren, you're incredible and no doubt a pioneer in free ride, but uh, when you rocked up and you started doing those 360s off those massive drops on your specialized big hit, the world temporarily went insane and started copping you, bolting little silly wheels onto their mountain bikes. And I think Norco actually, in 2004, actually bought out a hardtail called the Manic, which came with a 24 inch rear wheel. Well, that one must have been designed the morning after the Christmas party, eh? Now this humble little rally chopper actually gave me some thoughts about some other cool vehicles out there that have got smaller front wheels on them. For example, the Lamborghini Aventador. Yep, that's got a 20 inch front wheel and a 21 inch rear wheel on there. Yeah, and that is all about performance. And then of course you've got dragsters and funny cars. Those things put some serious power down, long wheelbase too. Then there's road time trial bikes. Some of the fastest options out there of all time had smaller front wheels on them, which was so much faster, in fact, that the UCI ended up banning them. Yeah, well, that sounds a bit like the UCI, doesn't it? And then, of course, there's tractors. Tractors are arguably the ultimate off-road vehicle, especially in muddy places like the UK. They've got enormous rear wheels on them, so big, in fact, well, they're just ridiculously big. Like, they've got massive Chevron tires on them, and they've got much smaller wheels on the front to keep that control in the muddy terrain. Sounds a little bit like British mountain biking territory there. So actually, putting a smaller wheel on the front of a hardtail makes a bit of common sense to me, to be honest. So uh, this is this is a canyon, Grand Canyon. Very nice, and actually makes a perfect candidate. Ah, uh huh. I know what you're thinking. That's cool, isn't it? <laughs> Okay, so I haven't just chucked a smaller front wheel on a 29-inch wheel bike. That would make a daft idea even more ridiculous. So to try and make it a bit more even, I put a longer travel 29 and fork on here. So this is a RockShox Zeb with 170 mil travel. This bike came with a 34 with 120 mil of travel. Now it has slackened off the head angle very slightly, so to 64 and a half degrees from 67 and a half, but with that extra travel uh, it comes extra sag basically. So it returns it in a riding position to back where it should be. So, uh, well, let's see how this thing feels on the trail, shall we? So this is. All right, so there's already a few things going on with the bike. Now, the first immediate thing is how agile the front end feels. So the head angle is three degrees slacker, yeah, and the fork is heavier, but the lighter wheel with the gyroscopic effects you get between the differences in the bigger wheel and the smaller wheel just feels so much more agile, even though arguably the steering is under more control. Now, there's also an illusion it's definitely an illusion that you've got more traction on the rear because this bike is a 29. I know how this bike feels 
with the regular size front wheel, so there's no more traction, but because of how the front end feels, you actually ride it differently. And the third point I wanna talk about is something that's happening on those tight switchback turns. Now, in particular here, there's loads of routes and things, the sort of terrain that on a hard tail, typically, you have gotta be quite careful with to keep your traction. Now, what I'm finding is I can move the front wheel around, just position it wherever I want. And because the rear doesn't feel as affected by the surface conditions, and I think the combination of that small wheel on the front that almost wants, doesn't want to tuck in, but there's almost a bit of understeer, but because the forks, you can just keep the power on, it's, it's a bizarre feeling and actually it feels like it wants to pull you up the hill. I kind of like it. I don't want to be, uh, well, yeah, make your own minds up on that, but it's kind of fun, I've got to say. Now, 100%, there are climbing benefits on this setup. Now, you might think I'm stating the obvious, it's not because the front end's lower, the front end's higher. But it's that wheel setup. It, honestly, it feels really good for climbing stuff, especially on the switchbacks. But what's it gonna be like when we point it back down the hill again? Yeah, we shall see. There's definitely something happening there. <laughs> okay, so there's definitely a few weird things going on. Although, to be fair, I could kind of guess this is gonna happen. So, the front end, when you're climbing, feels amazing, even though it's higher. When you're descending, there's 100% the difference between the smaller wheel and the rear wheel. Even on these berms, so these are designed to make you go nice and quick, there's a couple of got holes in them. As soon as the front wheel hits them, even though I've got 170 mil travel, it feels like the bike stalls slightly. The rear wheel wants to carry on at the same speed, so it feels like the back end almost wants to overtake the front. I mean, you can kind of guess that from how rally choppers and other bikes used to be. Anyone out there that's ridden one before, You'll know if you're ridden one through the woods, the front wheel kind of bounces through stuff and the rear wheel just wants to keep on trucking. So uh, yeah, basically not fit for purpose, but a really good laugh. <laughs> I'll tell you what, in all of this, if I can muster this up, I think I might have accidentally stumbled across something kind of fun. It's a bit of an ultimate climbing setup. This is hard though, this bit. Got to, uh, Use my energy. I don't even have to cheat with an e-bike to do this either. That's the beauty of it. It's a genuine, why he says with the wheel spin, genuine climbing monster. Now I've got to say, it feels a little bit nervous on some of this stuff, but uh, it's really good fun. <laughs> all right, let's face it. This is a bit of a daft experiment, but uh, hey, it's really good fun. That's all it's really about. Now there's a surprising amount of grip on that front end coming down stuff like this. Um, it kind of surprised me, I thought it was gonna be a bit out of control, but uh, I think the combo of the 170 mil travel and that big 2.6 tire, which actually weirdly is only two mil bigger than the 2.4, um, there's loads of grip and control on the front end. It actually feels really good. That's not what I was expecting. I thought it was gonna feel like a right old dog. Uh, I'm going up for another run.
it feels horrible on these sort of setup drop-offs. It feels like the front end digs in so much. Okay, so we've established that it climbs remarkably well, to be fair, and actually really surprised me. Um, and on the technical stuff, descending, it's actually surprisingly good. Good enough that I might consider riding it again. But stuff like this, just horrible to ride. So there's lots of, this is a track with GBU, and in the run up to this drop, there's lots of smaller drops. The stuff on a full suspension bike, you think nothing of. On a bike with equal size wheels, I think you think nothing of as well. The combination of the small front wheel and the big travel fork, like 170, bear in mind this frame was designed around the 120. The sheer amount of bottom out that you get in between those drops is so disruptive to the handling. And by the time I get down to this burn behind me, it feels like you're using false travel in the front and the back wheel wants to overtake you. So normally on a hard tail, your back end is the thing scratching around everywhere. The back end's gripping straight in, like the complete opposite. It's actually handling a little bit more like a full suspension in that respect just a really ugly one that's very wrong. Okay, so what have we learned in today's bizarre experiment? Well, first up, well, it kind of does remind me of a little bit of that rally chopper, and yeah, I had a lot of fun riding it, just like used to riding rally choppers. But was it good? Well, Yes and no, it really did surprise me genuinely in a few places. So climbing, bearing in mind that the front end on that is quite a lot higher than it was originally with the other wheel on there. So it's got 170 fork over a 120, giving it a 64 and a half degree head angle over the 67 and a half. And yet it was brilliant on the climbing. This small agile wheel was great for handling. Uh, I got up some stuff today, some steep stuff, but I don't genuinely think I'd get up on any of my other bikes. I'm really surprised. I might come back and try that just to confirm that. And technical descending, surprisingly good. It almost felt like I had more grip on the front end, partially with the suspension, but yeah, I'm actually kind of surprised. But the faster stuff, not ideal, because it kind of understeers quite a lot. Uh, it feels like the rear end wants to overtake you but it does make a hard tail more stable and you don't get kicked up the arse like you would with a smaller rear wheel. So it's kind of, it's kind of got a few things going on, but uh, let's face it, it's really ugly, isn't it? It's got a front end like not even a mother could love a face that ugly. It really does look bad. But um, I guess the bigger question would be, what would I ride tomorrow? Would I ride a regular mullet setup hardtail or a reverse mullet hardtail? I'd actually say this. Um, uh, hang me out over it, but I would because you know what? I had really good fun and sometimes just dicking around in the woods on a bike having a laugh is the best thing you can do. Uh, if you've got any cool ideas for us, let us know in those comments. See you next time.